welcome to the news. My name is Shalama Lawson. Chitungwiza, a small town south of Harare, has gone without water for days. The water crisis now poses serious health risks to the locals. Muchaneda Chimuka reports. Residents of Chitungwiza, a satellite town some 35 kilometers from Harare, are now drinking water from unsafe sources due to erratic water supply, posing serious health risks to the community. A few years ago, UNICEF and the local authorities drew some bowls to address the water problem, but most of them have since dried up. Women and children risk being attacked as they queue at night and in, in the early hours of the morning to fetch water. Maria Moyo of Unit B in Shitungwiza feared the shortage could result in an outbreak of diseases. Another resident, Rudoshora, said most boroughs in the area have not had water in the past three months. Three months. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Ruth Nduna said most residents were resorting to digging wells for water. Chitungwiza resident trust chairperson Alex Zimbora said 90% of the bowels drilled in the town through the Constitutional Development Fund are not working. To the surprise of everybody, the bowels were drilled but there is no water coming out of it. And now, uh, efforts have been made to meet with the MPs of the areas to try and discuss the issue with, with the ball drillers. Unfortunately now, the, the MPs are not forthcoming. Now people are desperate and they are ending up drinking waters from unprotected wells. 90% of them, they are not yielding anything. And the... Uh, to, in, in, my, in my own opinion, is that the, the contractors that were contracted to do the job did a shoddy job because we have got bowls that were drilled by, by UNICEF and all those bowls are yielding water. None of the UNICEF bowls have run dry even at the peak of the dry season. But now, with, with, with the CDF bowls, we've got other bowls that were drilled but never yielded water. So I just wonder what, what was the purpose of drilling a ball. Chitung with a town engineer, Alphonse Tinofa, acknowledged the problem. Arare implements a water rationing program whereby they close Chitung on every Friday at 5 p.m. and reopen on Monday, the next Monday, at 6 p.m. So we've got three days where there's no supply from City of Arare. When Chitungiza gets his water reopened on Monday, we close off St. Mary's and Zengeza on Tuesday evening to allow water to build pressure to fill reservoirs at Makon, which in turn supplies again north and again south. The challenge is if there's low water pressure from Sito Farad, it means the water does not reach the reservoirs at Makon. He said they have so far received a grant of almost 2 million euros from the African Development Bank to restore water and sewer infrastructure in Chitungwiza. In 2008, about 4,000 people died from cholera in Zimbabwe. Chitungwiza was one of the hardest hit. If the water situation is not urgently addressed, the town may be hit by another severe cholera outbreak. Muchanita Chimuka reporting for ATV. Service delivery in Bulawayo is worsening and residents are bitter over uncollected garbage, which now poses a health risk. Crispin Tavura reports. Bulawayo, Zimbabwe's second largest city, is sitting on a health time bomb as council is failing to collect swarms of refuse littering the city. Uh, recently, ATV visited the city where most street corners in the central business district were littered with heaps of uncollected garbage. Vendors were seen selling waste and food near garbage dumps, raising fears of an outbreak of cholera. Residents who spoke to ATV blamed council for poor service delivery. 
Lapa tilindi la pesa muti siye nzi la pe koti nanchu La ma koti la evali denu igeza lehi ka chesu munda buweze chwelu usha ngali Ile kuzi ni nangis chata kes pepu kesi siya alan Gutu ila ma pima agu ila ma pima shota tate nyu dutwe si zezi zaburo kuzi ni mba kuhu Aba sebe nza kuhu na apan Eee aba mama mbe abe fada ma koti la Be hafa ginsha ba hata ba hafa gitar Be lo kuhu Eh, hey, iko dikato kuchala ti ma 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 le si spatala ma kiwe ta kachide. Ambe si spatala si kanzili ngati. Kuba le inja we fike la bantu abane ngaba vera kuma nyama sama kama taunda pa vera ma reserve. So isi kanzo kume livoni plan. Uti lapa uchale ku isi smart. A swamp of big flies and a heavy stench from heaps of garbage. Dot Lawyers 50 Street, Lopengula Street, and the Egodini Commuter Omnibus Rank. Sifuna belungi sengi bila belungi sana kumbi kubwa la baani ya banga abani yona ba zaidi zote ekaika kwa kaya nani bana ba zeli ma ngai kwa baadhi mbali ngai abalungi sasa sivili ni tozi ya rais ina telephone interview deputy mayor of Lawyer Amin Mpofu said council was doing its best to address the problem and to restore the city to its former glory inside sources said council had few refuse trucks and this was compromising its ability to collect garbage in the city. The council's rules mounted last year when power utilities Esa Holdings disconnected power supply at some of its strategic offices due to a 9.2 million debt. Most local authorities in Zimbabwe have come under sharp criticism from residents for charging high rates, poor service delivery and corruption. Reporting for ATV, I am Crispin Tabura in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. The Harare International Festival of the Arts is set to thrill thousands of arts and music lovers when it rolls to life from the 1st to the 6th of May. Sharon Manjonjo reports. It is that time of the year again when regional and international artists converge in Zimbabwe to showcase their talents through various forms of art at the Harare International Festival of the Arts. The arts and music extravaganza will be a mixed bag of theater, dance, music, circus, street performance, spoken word, craft and visual arts. Haifa, a six-day festival, will run from May the 1st to the 6th. Haifa Artistic Director Emmanuel Bagoro say this year's festival will be held under the theme, Show of Spirit. A collage, a mixture, a mosaic, a puzzle of all the things that we are that represent our spirit in different ways, our energy, our hope, our optimism, a very positive show, um, giving different pictures of how we see ourselves as Zimbabweans. A wonderful opportunity. Second night, Opera Gala, Cab's Opera Gala, the glamorous night of the festival in lots of ways, the classical night. We are so utterly thrilled to be welcoming three of the major African-American singers from America, from New York City, um, they are major names, Laquita Mitchell, Renita Miller, and Lester Lynch. They are phenomenal stars of the African, music, uh, African American music scene. Bagoro, who is also the founder of Haifa, said renowned artist Ishmael Law will be sharing the stage with Zimbabwe's music icon, Oliver Mtukuzi. Haifa will also take the shows to the high-density suburbs of Harare, where artists will be performing for free. The festival has been held for the past 18 years in Harare Garden. Haifa's new board chairperson, George Mtenda Zamera, said the visit by various artists to Zimbabwe from across the globe creates a platform for artists to interact and share ideas. The direct impact the amount that Haifa pays for someone to make a poster uh, for the hotels, for that's direct. But there's an indirect spec, you know, where an artist is in Zim do some, but ends up buying shirts or buying items that are, and that generates economic activity. He added that the festival will need support from all stakeholders so that it can become as big as the Brazilian annual carnival, which is the biggest event in the world. Thank you for joining us. Good evening.